here today and we are going to work on a pretty fun project that's just easy and simple to do. And while everybody has been kind of spending more time at home, lots of people have been cooking. So I thought that we would make a longer and wider um, cookie sheet hot pad. So I have this in a couple different sizes and versions that are available, and I wanted to show you that. So let me know where you are from. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah, and oh, let me make sure I have turned on everything so that you guys can get the pattern. And let me just do a couple little settings. But I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I try to do live videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon. And I just try to come up with something that's fun, that's a quilting video, whatever kind of video. But this is a great time to work on um, learning how to domestic machine quilt on your sewing machine. So, but I've got a couple different versions and this is gonna be really a lot of fun for you guys to see. So let me just, so I can see everybody that's on there and your comments and everything that's going on there like that. So I have this one right here with this Buffalo plaid fabric and I actually have this fabric available at Stitches Quilting if you're interested in making one like that. I have another version that well, this wasn't my very first version. I, this was probably about my second version of this pattern um, many years ago, and I taught it as a kit for a class. So anyway, so that is another version of this. Um, this is um, this is one that we're gonna work on with no binding uh, method. Okay, so there's no binding on there. We turn it all inside out and just finish it up. This is the version with actual binding on there. So, um, so there's a couple different ones that we're doing, and um, hello, Liz, and I have a, a fun special surprise for Liz today, and now we've got this version right here that it's more made out of a linen, like a natural linen and a dark gray linen, so that's, that's a really fun um, cookie sheet hot pad right there, too. So, but this was another one that we quilted, and we did a tutorial on and all that kind of fun stuff but really most of that fabric. But today, this is one that Liz Boyce send, sent to me from Canada, and I want to make one that's more like hers. So I rewrote the easy, no binding cookie sheet hot pad. So it includes a version for this size and then for this size. So that's what we're gonna work on today. So. Um, and you guys, I would love to have my, um, my patterns to be a little bit shorter in length for you and I will work on that, but this is, I don't know how many pages this is, several pages, but on this pattern, it shows you the instructions of just how to cut the wide one or the narrow one. So your instructions are all right there. So hello, Sherry from Oklahoma. We have got Laura here. Um, and yes, Liz. So this is the hot pad that she made me and I absolutely love it. Um, Liz is actually a dog trainer and she's um, done, and she's shown dogs um, for German Shepherds and stuff. So I love this dog fabric that she made this hot pad with. I use this all the time. You can tell I've washed it lots. And uh, it's, it's just so fun. But I thought it would be fun to make Luke, Luke is my son, uh, with special needs, and he has his own apartment. Uh, it's still within the house, but it's his own apartment. It has its own door and kitchen and everything else. But I thought we'd make one for Luke, so I'm gonna show you what fabric. Can anybody guess what fabric we're gonna use for Luke's um, is what we're gonna do today. Um, some other hot pads that we made um, were these ones where you just kind of layer and fold it. Fabric, the fabric I have on this one, it's $4 a yard at the Stitches Quilting Store with the Super Lucky Fabric Sale. So all of that Christmas fabric is $4 a yard that we used for these ones right here. Okay, so let's get started on the quilted hot pad. So this is what we're gonna be using is pretty much uh, Liz's right here. And then this sample right here, because we're this is the no binding one. So let me take all these hot pads away. And you guys, I am so dying to make some homemade bread. 
and then use that homemade bread dough to just make the house smell really good. Um, Liz, you did a German Shepherd applique wall hanging today. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see pictures. I don't know if you posted any pictures, um, but I'm dying. Hi, Josephine from Carver. How are you today? And Joanne in Pennsylvania and Kathy in North Carolina. I just love it. I'm going to clean my glasses just a tiny little bit. You guys, I have had such an adventure, well, late yesterday and then early today, trying to secure um, devices around the house so nothing inappropriate ever pops up. And, oh my gosh, I have quite a story for you that I will explain later. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the fabric. So, Luke is a, a Golden State Warrior fan. He had me make him a Golden State Warrior mask. And um, I'm supposed to make one for his friend too, but I thought we'd use this fabric right here, which I already had, um, to make Luke a hot pad. Luke loves to cook. So I have everything cut out right here and prepped. And, oh, there's a piece right there. So let's go ahead and set this up to the side. This is the batting that I've pre-cut. So we're pre-cutting this about eight inches wide and 36 inches long. So that's how you're doing that part. I also have Thermolam here. So Thermolam is just a nice pellen product to help you um, push off the heat from um, objects, if that makes any sense. But if you don't have Thermolam or access to it, I have a little bit left in the store. My supplier uh, is not carrying it right now, so I can't order more in the store, but I did used to carry lots of Thermolam. Um, so if you don't have Thermolam, just use two layers of batting. Keep life simple and easy, okay? If you make something with Thermolam, you should not be microwaving it or anything like that where you put like a hot pad in there. So, you know, you, you just wanna be smart anyways, okay? So I pre-cut Luke's um, Golden State Warrior fabric to the eight inches. And um, I'm gonna make sure that this is at 36 inches. I'm not sure if it is or isn't. Um, yeah, it pretty much is. Okay, so that's great. So this is already pre-cut and this is what we're going to use for our layering on here. And what's fun about this project, oh, I, I can switch to the camera view. For the handles, I am actually, Liz did hers. Maybe I should do it like Liz. How should I make it? Hi, April in Mississippi. I'm sure you guys have been making hot pads, but this is a great project to make for maybe a loved one that you haven't seen lately, um, or, you know, a, a family member, or to even get ready for some of, oh, hi, Nina, Nina. She's she's watching while she's doing her mail route. route. I love you. She's on YouTube, Nina is. How fun, that's awesome. Okay, so Liz did all of hers in all these different layers, but I'm actually wanting to do some different colors here so that when we're layering it, you're gonna be able to tell which layer is which, and it'll kind of match what's in this pattern. So I'd like to do all the same layers, but just for teaching perspective, I do have a royal blue that's pre-cut, and I also have a yellow that's pre-cut. I'm gonna set this extra yardage to the side. Okay, so. Um, so one of the things, one of the first things that we need to do is we want to stitch together the handles first. So let's pull out the pattern. The pattern says to, to have the handle be um, an eight by eight inch fabric and then an eight by 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that real fast. Um, so an eight by eight and an eight by 11. So I'm gonna pull out my yellow and then my royal blue and I'm gonna do my yellow, I'm gonna do two pieces, eight by 11, cause I'm going to have like a contrast in my handles kind of pop out. So let's go ahead and slice that and let's move it to the overhead camera. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun today. And when Luke comes home, he's gonna be pleasantly surprised. All right, um, yes, you can see my surface. So I'm going to, I've got this eight inches and I'm gonna bring it down here to 11 inches and go ahead and cut that. And so I've got two pieces just right here for this, okay? Then for this handle, I thought I'd make one for his best friend um, that loves the Golden State Warriors too. They're like two peas in a pod. And it's so wonderful that they have, you know, a friendship 
Um, cause so often, you know, you can just be lonely if you don't have friends. And so you, you want to teach your kids the ability to, to create and make friendships and maintain those relationships. So here is the eight by eight right here. Okay. So now what we're going to do, well, it's about that size and we're going to now sew these right. Well, I'm using solids right sides together. <laughs> okay. I just love solids. Um, I think I maybe cut something too long here, but we're gonna fix that in just a minute. And let's go ahead and sew these ones together. I'm gonna flip this around, right like this. And we're gonna just take this through the sewing machine and, uh, and sew this line right here, okay? So let's go ahead and pull this out. It's so good to see all of you guys today. And so many people are baking and, you know, bringing out new hobbies in their lives. Let me go ahead and move that up to the side a little bit, our extra um, things. And so many people are um, doing this. So I think that this would be a great project to make for somebody that you know is cooking a little bit more at their in their home from having to be, you know, in a little bit of more isolation. I know I've been actually cooking more, um, but in addition to that, I've been cooking more so that we don't have to buy as much frozen food too. So let me just go ahead and press these. I'm gonna press this open. I think my yellow, I, I actually trimmed too big. So let's go ahead and bring this over with Liz's. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. So we're gonna just bring it, oh, no, that's actually pretty good. Look at that, okay, awesome. So Luke's gonna have a little bit bigger of a handle. I would actually probably bring this, let's go ahead and just bring this about right here. I think that looks really nice. I think I, I made about an inch too big there. So, and let's bring this one down. And um, just when I was cutting on live TV, so we're gonna bring this right here. Okay, these are gonna be our two handles. And we are going to use a bowl to go ahead and, um, and quilt this. So let's go ahead and, and cut off my excess fabric. I've got two handles right here and I cut it just a little bit too big and which happens frequently when we're just cutting away, right? So these are the two handles. I wanna slip a piece of batting in here so that then so I know you guys have scrap batting laying around, right? So we're gonna just cut some batting and we have lots and lots of batting. I hope you guys save yours. I really save ours. Um, the, the extra batting that I have got, I save. So, and this, I'm not going to worry about it being actually, um, being, you know, insulated with the thermal land. Hopefully, oops, I'm sorry, I moved that camera, you guys. I apologize when I was pulling the batting. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of layer this right here. The batting doesn't have to be absolutely perfect when it's coming through here. We can have a little bit of extra batting as we're doing this project. I'm gonna just make sure I've got some excess here. Okay, so use your, use. this is a great thing because it uses up smaller pieces of fabric and um, you can really customize something. I'm going to bring this batting a little bit further in. It uses up scraps. It uses up extra batting scraps. It's just really a great project to do. So let's go ahead and just work with that one. And I'm going to just make sure that my batting is squared up inside of here. Got a little fiber right there. It's not going to notice because it will be on the inside of the, the fabric. Okay, let's see here. Now, if you guys, I know, I, I gained a little weight too, um, Melissa. It's been hard to, like, be staying in your house and stuff like that. And, you know, oh, I totally agree. Okay, so here are my two handles that I'm just going to quilt now just a little bit. And I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So... Once again, the best thing to do, oh, here's my safety pins. Um, the best thing to do is to just grab a couple safety pins. I am just gonna do lines on this, 
and I'm going to try to do some fast lines on it and not really worry about that. But what has been your go-to snack during this isolation more at home? And what has been your go-to cooking thing that you just really enjoy cooking and smelling and, and things like that? We started making baked ziti, which of course is full of carbs, but Luke works down at the retirement community. And one day they did baked ziti and oh my goodness, but baked ziti was really kind of fun because we were able to make it and then take it to other people's homes. So we were able to make big batches of it. And Corey's mom and dad, his dad is 100. So now I'm going to quilt this. I just kind of stabilized it with two pins and I'm going to quilt it and I've put some yellow thread in here. I'm gonna increase my stitch length just a little bit. So I'm gonna come up here along this top little border. So here we go. Let's bring this around. And it's so fun to create something that's just from new. And I'm gonna do another stitch up here. This is kind of like a fun finishing, finishing stitch on there. Uh, so we started baked ziti. We cooked lots of soups, which was a lot of fun with like tortilla soup. What's your go-to and, uh, oh, peanut M&Ms. You know what? One of my biggest problems was, and I've never really eaten a lot of trail mix before, but oh my gosh, I got into eating trail mix like crazy that I really kind of had to restrain myself with how much trail mix I would do. And then I was also embellishing my trail mix with additional chocolate chips, or additional um, oh, almonds or cranberry raisins, um, more raisins. I would kind of like buy a big bag of trail mix from Costco and then I just embellish it, embellish it with things I loved. So yeah, I kind of had to be careful with all my trail mix. Okay, so now I'm gonna just do some lines across here to just kind of quilt these a little bit. And I could use my, and I'm using yellow thread, so you're gonna be able to see my stitching lines. And let me go ahead and just move this up, and I'm going to pull it back over. And I'm going to randomize my stitching lines, okay? So I'm gonna randomly put these stitching lines here so that we can see, we don't have to have perfectly straight stitching lines, okay? Because, you know, making things extra straight, um, I don't know, it just takes more time. So, which, you know, we can do that, but I'm doing a live video here. And so I did two that were close together. I'm gonna do one at an angle right here. So we don't feel like we have to do completely straight, straight lines. And I'm gonna travel along here. And I'm going to do another one at an angle and take out this pin. And you know, it just makes it fun and playful and easy to do where you don't have to overthink it or over, you know, go for it. Okay, so why don't I go ahead and maybe put another stitching line right here. I think it sounds like fun. And maybe I'll put one more over on the other side. So you just kind of want to quilt it enough. And this is for Luke. And you know, Luke loves basketball. So I'm not really worried about too much about how this looks. I mean, I am, but you know, it's just a fun basketball themed type thing that we've got going on there. And I'm gonna do one more line just right over here, just for fun. Okay, so then that gives us, I'm gonna do something similar on the other handle. And I like using extra batting here because I'm going to be able to trim this off and square it up. So let's go ahead and do the same thing over here. I'm gonna take out this safety pin and we're just gonna kind of be consistently inconsistent, all right? So I'm gonna just take that one right there. And of course, you probably have additional time when you are sewing that you can be a little bit more deliberate with your placement of things. I, of course, am doing this as a live video and I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do an, an angled one over here. 
just to kind of get oh, just a feel, maybe a modern vibe to it. Not that Luke minds. Let me go ahead and trim some of my back threads here and bring this over. And let's do another diagonal. Um, crunchy nut cornflakes for sna snacking on and lots of fresh fruit. Yes. And then I started doing dried apples. Um, but boy, we've been grilling and barbecuing more. For some weird, weird reason, you guys, I started absolutely loving to eat just green peppers, just raw. I take a whole green pepper and I kind of eat it, not like an apple, I break it up into pieces. But I really, I don't know, for some reason, just truly enjoy green peppers. Isn't that funny? Okay. So let's go ahead and just bring this over just a little bit and we're going to square this up. Let me do another one. Maybe I should go with my little squiggly line in there. Let me do another little line right here. And I might go and do a, a couple squiggly lines on here. Just kind of go with a, a, you know, more of a little vibe that we've got going. So I could have put my foot in here. So here I'm gonna just go back and forth with my quilting. And this gives you a chance to experiment with things and do some different stitches and to try out different things. But I'm gonna just kind of go back and forth with a couple little random squiggles. And let's go do that one more time up here. And you just kind of want to randomly place things to the point that it just looks good. Um, and just experiment with lots of different types of techniques on there. I'm going to add these random little squiggles to this. Um, and I think that that works out great. I could have marked my fabrics, but I didn't. And let's do this again, another little squiggle. And I do the squiggle just by going back and forth with that. And I'm gonna do one more lower down here, okay? Okay, so that gives us a couple different options. On the main part, we're gonna do actually straight lines. And it's gonna be great. Okay, so now what we're gonna wanna do is trim these down and square these up. So although it might be smart, I think I might set both of these aside because I'm going to square them all up at one time. You're, you, the microwave popcorn is really nice. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then to have um, the, the hot popcorns. I totally agree with you. Okay, so here we are going to go with this uh, Warriors print right here. And then I'm going to go with the solid blue because solid blue, oops. I don't know, maybe this is not wide enough and long enough. Uh-oh, okay, and I didn't bring extra blue fabric. We're gonna have to go with a solid yellow. So that's fine. We'll just wash it for Luke. Um, so I'm gonna go with a yellow on top of this. I have my bolt of blue downstairs. Darn it, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and just cut this to be the same. Alrighty. Um, but yeah, I keep all of my things downstairs. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that off. Bring this over and have this at the same length. I'm gonna just look and see if I do have that another blue. I don't, but that's okay. We're gonna make another one for a friend. Okay, there we go. So that one's taken care of. Okay, so here is, and let's go ahead and press this a little bit so we have the folds out a bit because when we're quilting it, we'll have a better project if we've got kind of the folds and the wrinkles and things like that out. So I just took this straight off the bolt. And um, so, anyways, there was like it was folded on the bolt. Okay, that looks good. All right, we are now going to layer our hot pad. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take, here's Liz's, it's so fun. I just love that. Okay, we're gonna take our thermal lamp, and the thermal lamp, we're going to put 
So I'm going to have this side be the side that touches the hot pan. Okay, so we're going to put our thermal lamp down first, right here. So it, it's the part that touches the hot pad. And we're also going to curve these, curve our ends, and we're going to use a bowl for that. So, oh, yes, you know what? I should switch to my quilting machine after I pieced, but yes, I was using a standard foot. I will switch to my quilting foot. Great question. Jane, thank you. So I will switch to my quilting foot. I took my quilting foot off so that I could piece those handles. Okay, so we're gonna just take that piece right there and let's get some, oops, I knocked the camera again. And now we're gonna put a layer of just batting right here, okay? Just like this. Oh, nope, we're not taking any phone calls right now. It's actually Luke. He's pretty funny. Okay, and we are doing the no quilting method here. So the no binding method. So for that reason, which, you know, sometimes when people start, this would be a great project, say for your grandchildren too. When people start quilting, um, sometimes the binding part is the most intimidating part of the process, right? So we, you know, sometimes keeping things a little bit simple. So we are gonna go ahead and quilt this but we are going to um, do it in such a way that we can turn it inside out. So let me show you how we layer this. So you can see right here, this top fabric is loose, okay? And these handles are quilted. You can see where we've got quilted handles right here. But if you look at the back of it, the part that's going to touch the hot pad, this is actually quilted right here, okay? So we've got this right here. So what we are actually going to do, and how I have it shown in the pattern to do the turn inside out method, is we are going to use a piece of purple fabric. And I call this purple junk layer in the, in the pattern, all right? So we're going to use a piece of purple fabric that's going to be kind of like, so we're not just quilting straight on our batting, all right? And it's just gonna give us a friendly little layer. So. Here's my purple layer. So let's go ahead and cut this. I did bring up my purple bolt, but not the blue bolt. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this the same width as our other fabrics. In fact, I'll lay it down here. And I'm going to just, we'll go ahead and press this in just a minute, but just to get it off the bolt, I'm gonna fold it into fourths here. When I'm just cutting things at large, I'll do something like this. All right, now let's trim this down so it fits what we're looking at. And look, here's another pressed, you know, where it was folded over on that bolt. So let's go ahead and just open this up and let's press this one more time. Okay, so this is what in the pattern I call the purple junk layer, all right? Now, the, I have this pattern again as the binding method, and it tells you then how to construct a binding on it. So this pattern comes with lots of different versions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just lay this purple fabric on top of here, lay that over. And I love the way Liz did it, but I'm trying to show you guys the different techniques that we can do here should probably press out that fold right there. Um, but the different techniques that we can do by using different layers of fabric. So I do like it all one layer, but I'm definitely trying to show you. And if you press your layers together, it really kind of, mm, it just makes them a little bit more cohesive. So let's go ahead and trim this real fast. And I've got excess purple layer. And remember, it's okay to have some excess because we are going to square this down in a minute um, after we are finished quilting it. Okay, so now let's put a few um, pins in it because that's what we would do. This is a great precursor if you're new to quilting. Um, this is a great project to do that will help you with your quilting techniques. So you, 
I, you could use spray basting for this. You could use anything. And one thing that I determine before I start pinning is how am I going to quilt this project? So I am going to quilt this project with just straight lines coming down here, following the pattern of the fabric, okay? So sometimes if you have fabric that's maybe a gingham or a stripe, it's fun to use because then you don't need any quilting lines. So then knowing what my pattern is going to be, I place my pins in strategic areas that I know I most likely will not need to. So I'm going to come down this line. So I might as well put a pin right here instead of down the line where I'm going to have to take out the pin as I'm stitching. So I'm just going to do a few lines down here and that will help this all stay together. And it will give that quilted feel and Luke is going to love this project. And maybe he's going to make another thing of baked ziti. I don't know. He's got other favorites, so we all have our favorites. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to put on my walking foot because the walking foot is really easy to use. What it does is it gets your foot, your top foot of the fabric, is your top foot is going to do it as the feed dogs, feed your fabric through as the feed dogs are feeding it through. If you don't have a walking foot, you can do this without. Uh, you just want to kind of help your fabric go through a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I didn't have a walking foot for, I don't know, maybe the first 10 years when I started quilting. I just didn't, we didn't have very many resources and anything that I could save money on. I went ahead and I saved money. Okay, so we're going to just bring this down here and I'm going to just stitch on this and I'm stitching on the lines of the fabric to get this to come through. So let me go ahead and show you. I'll bring my cam my, my sewing machine a little bit more in the camera view. And this makes this really easy, is when you do have a piece of fabric that has lines on it, you can just kind of go with those lines and with the creation of them. And it makes sometimes your, your project a lot faster. So let's go ahead and flip this around. And I'm gonna come down this way. And let's go ahead and go over to the side. I'm gonna stitch down this line. So that first swipe, I didn't have to really take out any pins because I was strategic about how I wanted to put the pins in. Here we go. It's going down and I'm feeding it through. I'm feeding it through the top and the bottom at the same time. My, with my quilting foot. Okay, let's turn it around again. Let's bring it over here, flip this around. We're gonna go down this line right here. And it just gives a fun quilted look to it. And not too difficult. Once again, I'm missing a safety pin right there, so I don't have to sit there and take out my safety pins. This can give you some practice and a little bit more confidence to do a project like this and later apply it to a wall hanging or a full size, uh, you know, a smaller quilt on your domestic sewing machine. So it kind of just gives you a little bit more confidence as you're sewing. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna go across these Golden State Warrior symbols and I'm gonna go down along this path and I'm gonna just kind of eyeball it, right, like that. I feel like I'm doing pretty good. I think that's working. And remember, my purple junk layer is right here. And it mainly just smooths things out so that the batting isn't right there, right inside your feed dogs. It just makes it a little bit cleaner and it helps you understand the order of the layers. Okay, so you can see this pin right here was not strategically placed, so that's a pin that I'm gonna take out and I'm gonna stop my quilting in order to take that out. Let's go ahead and pull this up here and I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna do one more line. I don't think it's totally needed, but it'll be fine. I'm gonna just kind of come down along this edge. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and layer our layers right here. Okay, 
Here we go. It's going, 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 going. And there we go. So we got that gone. So anyways, let's see here. Um, tell me what else. Do you make the stitch length longer than your regular sewing? I do do a slightly longer stitch length. Good question, Liz. So it's just slightly longer when I'm doing my quilting. Just slightly is what I do. You guys, I really want that blue fabric. Okay, so now this is what this is going to look like. We're going to put this side over here. Okay, let's maybe go this way. This is going to be our one pocket. This is going to be the other pocket. Oh, let's take out our other pins so we don't have any problems here. Okay, let's take out this pocket. Here we go. And you know, I think that that blue fabric, do I have anything right here next to me? Um, I am looking. I think I really should do blue, for, especially for Luke. Um, and grab that blue. So hold on for one second. I'm going to go grab the, this royal blue because it's going to be better bumping up to the hot, the, oh, sorry, the hot pad. Oh, we're doing it this way. So there we go. So yeah, we can do this better. Okay, but, um, so we're going to put on our yellow. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm doubting myself with what I'm doing, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to layer this the way that this is layered. This tells you how to layer it right before you go. I usually put a denim needle in. We're going to square this up in just a moment, but I want to show you, let's find the instructions on how you layer and then turn it inside out. Okay, just one moment. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is what we're doing right here. Okay, so we're, we're doing this this right here. And what, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this down so that this faces that way, all right? And let's go ahead and start cleaning up our areas and squaring these things up. So I'm gonna lay this on top of here and we're gonna face it down so that when we turn this inside out, these are going to be faced out, all right? But let's go ahead and square this up, and we are actually going to curve the edge. Okay, that looks good. So let's square everything up the way that we want this to be with, because every, every time you ever quilt, the fabric shifts, and then you need to square it up afterwards. So, and I've got extra things in here that I don't mind. Let me not push my safety pins off the table. Okay, so let's go ahead and just clean this off because after we quilt, we kind of want to clean off the edges. And I was intentionally not super, you know, I had extra batting on there. And let's go ahead and lay this down. And let's, and we're going to curve our edge. And we're going to use the bowl to curve our edge now. Okay, so there we go on that side. All right. Okay, so you guys, I will have to tell you what I ended up doing today that was the most disastrous thing ever. Okay, so I went and I protected. I always protect all the devices in our house so that kids are not vulnerable to like pornography or stumbling on things that are just not appropriate. And I especially do this for Luke because Luke doesn't appreciate being exposed to things or stumbling on something. So we always have our Comcast is protected. Um, we have computers that are protected, but Luke doesn't really have access to computers. His cell phone is an iPhone, but his cell phone is locked down. So he doesn't have access to like Safari or Facebook or things like that. But I'm having him use a new game system because he's wanting to buy new games, like new sports games, you know, like Madden games and things like that. Well, I don't want to pay $60, $70 for a game when uh, most likely, okay, let's go ahead and trim this side to the other one. You know, most likely the system's going to be outdated, right? We want to be smart with what we're buying. So... He's using a new, a more updated game system. Well, that, that game system was so hard to do. 
got some extra thread sitting right here. See, these look pretty good. Where's my other handle? Did I drop it on the floor? Well, you guys, I had to use, I'm using an Xbox. Where's my other handle? Where'd my other handle go? Does anybody know? Um, yes, if you, if you ask about the pattern, the pattern is available on, it's for free. Where'd my handle go, you guys? And maybe it went and fell over on the other side. It did. Hang on for one minute. Let me grab it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I went and I protected the Xbox so that you can't access. Okay, yep, everything's ready. Okay, so we're doing this pretty side. This, this is our back side, okay, you guys? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the front side face down on top of it because we're gonna turn this whole thing inside out. So let's take this one and the front side is going to be facing down. So let me show you this one more time. We've got the back side of the hot pad, front side of the handles face down. Okay, this is going to be the top layer right here. Oh, we got to curve our edges. Well, we can do that in just one second. Let's go ahead and pin this together. Um, I could use just like straight pins and let's get this end and we're going to curve our handles so that it's a little bit more curved well anyways you guys i went and i protected this xbox and i was so proud of myself it took me about three hours and i did it with a caregiver and you have to do it through look at this through the controller it has no abcs all right so then i wake up this morning i'm so excited to get massive work done Okay, we're gonna bring this over here and we're gonna curve our handles. So let's use a pen here. And I'm gonna just bring this over here like this. Let's curve it, eh, kind of like that. Here we go. And let's curve this side. And I'm gonna trim this off. And we're gonna turn it inside out like that. Okay, let's go to the other side and curve this handle. I wake up this morning and oh my goodness, the Microsoft account that I used, because I, I had to use a Microsoft account that all this gaming data was on. Oh, my computers, my laptop and my computer locked me out of the internet and everything else. You guys, it was awful. I have been tearing my hair out trying to fix it today. Oh my goodness. It's not a simple process to try to protect your family. Okay, I'm gonna trim off these so we have a, a pretty curved edge here. Let's trim that off, that looks nice. Let's go ahead and do it on the other side. So I was locked out of my computers and couldn't go to like Google. I had to give myself permission to go to Google and to go and, oh my gosh, it was really frustrating, just like basic stuff wasn't like I was seeing but I I shut his down so that he couldn't use it at all okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to leave an opening right about here and yes the pattern will come to you so uh, through Facebook and and Nina when you're on YouTube I'll get I'll email it to you but it'll be in the description of the YouTube video but I will send it to you Okay, we're gonna leave an opening about this big on it, but I am going to stitch on this side. Remember, this is our purple junk side. Purple junk side. This is the side that's gonna be dirty with the pots. These are the, the pretty handles, and that's gonna be the top side. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this this way, and we're gonna leave an opening. So I'm gonna leave an opening right about here, okay? That then we will turn inside out. So this is the no binding method. I still have my um, quilting foot on here. Let's bring this down. I'm so excited to make this for Luke in his apartment. He sure loves to cook. Food is so important to him. I'm gonna pivot around the corner here and just slowly pivot around. He is gonna be so happy when he comes home today and he has like something I made for him. I know it's gonna make him feel loved and adored. And I'll have to make some more of these as gifts to give. Okay, so we're gonna come down this extra side. Once again, my yellow fabric is wider. 
So I'm letting my excess go over the side and bringing this down. I'm leaving the opening on this side, bringing this over. Let me just kind of line that up. Looks good. And I'm going to slowly pin this on this side or a pivot. Let's pivot this around. But it's crazy what we have to do nowadays to <clears throat> kind of protect our kids from <clears throat> not stumbling on things that we don't want them to stumble on. Um, and I know everybody has different ways of parenting, but I do try hard with Luke. Okay, so I've left an opening probably about three inches. I'm going to back space a little bit so I don't go back up there. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and turn this baby inside out. We will do one more stitch around the circumference. And I might just go ahead and take off some of this extra yellow fabric that's there. Just kind of, just so it doesn't have too much excess in there. So there's that piece. Go ahead and pull off that one. Here we go. Let's not cut myself. Here we go right here. Slice that off. Let's do it on this other side. Because things just kind of, as you're making them and quilting them, they become puckery and fun and so beautiful. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and birth this baby and see what it looks like. So we're going to turn this inside out through our opening. Probably could have left the opening bigger. And then we're going to have our hot pad with no binding. So this is a great project. Say you have kids that are with you during the summer and you want to help them make a project that looks good maybe for grandma. It's a great project for us to do that's fast. Ah, let's pull this out of here. Okay, this is tricky. Okay, let me just shove that in there. There we go. And bring that through. And then we can do this again, but we'll do it with the binding method. And I'll have it all finished so I can show you guys how to bind. Okay, I'm gonna, well, I can't reach my hand in there. Good grief. Leave a bigger opening. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay, now remember, we kind of had this so that this was facing the wrong side. Okay, remember that? But we're gonna flip this around. So now it has the yellow handles, which I do like. I think it's nice to kind of have your handles differentiated. Let's pull that out, get that coming. I can use my point to point turner to make sure things are pulled inside out. And we'll do that. Let me get this other side. But look at how nice that looks. And this side is quilted with the thermal lamb. Let's go ahead and bring this other one out. But isn't this a great thing? Did you backstitch at the opening? I did. I did backstitch to avoid it tearing open. But kind of wish it was a little bigger, right? But that's okay. So I would probably leave about a five inch opening for this because it is bulky. We've got two layers of batting in there or the thermo lamb. And once again, I'm gonna bring this through and then look at how this looks. It looks just beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna take the point to point turner, slide it in there, and kind of press this out. But look at how nice that quilting looks right here. It looks just great. We don't have to overthink what we're doing and doing randomized things. It looks fun and modern. Doesn't that look great? Okay, let's go over on this side. I'm taking my point to point turner and sticking it in the hole. And I'm gonna bring this around and push this out some more. I do sell the point to point turners. I only have two in stock right now. And remember, I put now all Christmas fabric, well not all Christmas fabric, but uh, some Christmas fabric on sale for $4 a yard. Cause this is a fun thing to work on for Christmas. But I also think the buffalo plaid is a lot of fun too. Okay, so now we're gonna wanna press this again before, see how nice that looks? Doesn't it look just wonderful? I love it. Yes, okay, Melody Carter. 
Thank you for saying that I'm being a great parrot. <laughs> Gosh, Melody, thank you for saying that. Because I'll tell you what, I felt like tearing my hair out this morning. Like trying to get, I was downstairs and downstairs is where I kind of do all the orders and where all the bolts of fabric are and where I ship things. And oh my gosh, I was so excited to work on drafting some new patterns for you guys <laughs> and, and then shipping these orders. And then, oh my goodness, I couldn't even get into my, well, I could get into my own computer. It just wouldn't let me use software. And I was so frustrated and it took me like, it took me a while to figure out. So I'm just changing that Microsoft account to become his because I tried other accounts on the Xbox and I couldn't do it. It said you can schedule an appointment to talk to Microsoft, but I wasn't interested. Um, okay, I am now going to close this opening. So then I come up here to my big computer, that's the desktop computer, because it can run live videos. I can't, you can't run and stream live videos from just any computer, okay? I had to do the same thing all over again. And I just thought, oh my goodness. And I thought I had it kind of preset so I could do it again, but I had to do it all over again up here. Okay, I'm gonna close this opening and I'm going to do a finishing stitch around the top of this. But this could also be quilted again with some stitching lines right along here if you wanted to. I have done that on some of my other quilts. But isn't this a great project to do? So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is going to close this opening and I'm going to do a, a top stitch along here for sure and along here. I think we've got plenty of that. I could actually do some top stitching this way a little bit. We could do anything, okay? But then you close this and you've got a great hot pad. A great hot pad to pull something out of the oven that's wide like a thing of baked ziti for Luke. But yeah, thank you, Melody, for saying that because I really felt like tearing my hair out. And you know, the reason why I did it was to try to be a good parent. And you know, being a good parent sometimes is exhausting, right? Let's change the camera view and I'll talk to you guys. Being a good parent, did I change it? I did. Being a good parent can be exhausting. Let me switch my, uh, my foot one more time from the walking foot back to the regular foot. Um, and you guys, no matter what we do, but being a good parent, being a good person, being a good whatever, okay? It is exhausting to do. But I was reading a quote by Abraham Lincoln this morning that I wrote to Jake. That little quote book's over on the stairs. And it was about doing your just your very, very best no matter what you're doing. And I wrote to Jake about how I finally, because if Jake were here, Jake could help me with that stuff. <laughs> with the Xbox, I just, I'm not an Xbox person. Okay, I'm gonna just go do this finishing stitch here. But you know, we just need to try to do our very, very best. And sometimes, so let me go ahead and just slide this along. You could slip stitch this closed. You could do a finishing stitch like I'm doing. You could do any number of things, but I tell you, Luke is going to be a happy man when he comes home. And maybe I'll try to take a picture and share it with you guys um, of him and I. But he'll, um, he rides a bus. It's called a flex bus that takes him to his special needs program. And it does door-to-door -door service. So they pick him up down there or they pick him up here and they just drive him straight up back to our house. And um, it's been hard for him to start back up to everything. Okay, I'm gonna stop that right there. And let's go ahead and do the other side. So you can see there's my finishing stitch. Not too bad. I can slip stitch that opening a little bit more. So it's a little bit finer, you know. Um, but it is, it's exhausting trying to do the right thing. And it's hard sometimes, but sometimes we do, we have to take the hard route and we have to kind of do things the hard way and it's a little exhausting but we can do it because we're tough and we're resilient and we're capable and we're we love those around us and we do things out of love not fear and we do it instead of being scared of the technology or overwhelmed by it Anyways, but I still have to fix my computers because that thing is blocking him from seeing anything. Okay, you guys, there it is. I've got to go ahead and cut off different stitches 
But remember, this makes me feel so good after working on all that computer stuff. And I'm just so glad to be here with you guys today. And here's the one that Liz made me. This one's bound. So what I'll do is I'll do this again. I'm gonna make another one. But this next time, I'm gonna prepare the binding and I'll show you guys how to put the binding on. And look at what Liz did here. She actually did like a zigzag on that. Isn't that pretty? I love what Liz did here. Um, Melissa says, this might sound funny, but I truly needed this today. Seriously, Melissa? Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad that somebody needed something of something I did or said because I was exhausted. Okay, but look at that, look at the, um, that zigzag stitch, I love it. Liz, is that a thicker kind of thread? You gotta let us know what that is. That would be fun to do a zigzag stitch along here and to zigzag that down. Wow, okay, well anyways, we'll do it maybe with the binding. So I will have another one of these prepped and ready to go, but then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to layer it. I'll have the handles all ready and the body ready, but then I'll show you how to layer it and put that binding on. So we'll do that one next, and then I will update that pattern for you so it has both the wide method. So remember, the pattern has this method right here, and then it has the thinner method right here. So, and both of them are great for different reasons. And they're, it's just fun to make something different. And these are both the no binding, but then there is the binding version too. So you guys, just get out your sewing machines. Um, sometimes I have to stop making masks and do something fun just so it feels really good. And I have to tell you, this is a fun project to do. And I know it's gonna make Luke smile and it's gonna make him wanna cook something and I'm gonna enjoy that. So I'm gonna go trim off all my threads and make this look cute for when he comes home and get it ready maybe in a little gift bag or something like that. So it's always fun to share joy. So remember, um, give lots of love to yourself today. Give lots of love to other people today and remember to take care of you and take care of the others that you need to. So I love you guys. We'll see you a little bit later and I hope you have a good day. Post things over in the Everyone Can Quilt group. Let me know what you're making and creating. I can't wait to see it. And I will chat with you guys a little bit longer. Have a fun day. And I can't wait to see what you are making too. I'll be back Friday at noon. Hopefully with my computers working.